Space Shuttle Endeavour, born out of the loss of the Space Shuttle Challenger in 1986, represented a commitment to continuing America's human spaceflight program. The nation's decision to build Endeavour set the stage for dramatic missions to come. The last of five orbiters to be built for spaceflight, Endeavour was named in a national competition by elementary and secondary school students after the 18th century sailing vessel commanded by Captain James Cook. Construction of Endeavour began with its contract award on July 31, 1987 to replace Challenger, which was lost 73 seconds after launch on January 28, 1986. Endeavour was outfitted with many safety improvements, including a drag chute to be deployed post-landing and nose wheel steering to improve wear on the tires during rollout on the runway. Additionally, Endeavour's plumbing was designed for a state-of-the-art addition allowing for longer stays in space. Endeavour was delivered to NASA's Kennedy Space Center from its Palmdale, California construction site in May 1991. Endeavour's flight history has included some of the shuttle program's most memorable flights, starting with its very first mission, STS-49, in May 1992 just one year after Endeavour first arrived at the Kennedy Space Center for final processing. The primary goal of that mission was to rescue the Intelsat-6 satellite, stranded in low Earth orbit after launch atop an expendable rocket. It would be outfitted with a new motor, designed to boost the communication satellite to its operational orbit 22,000 miles above the Earth. ignition and liftoff of the maiden voyage of Endeavour on a satellite rescue mission. For two spacewalks, astronauts Pierre Thewitt and Rick Hebe tried to place a specially designed grapple bar on Intelsat to facilitate its capture with the shuttle's robot arm. When those attempts failed, the crew and mission control devised a dramatic plan calling for Thewitt, Hebe, and a third astronaut, Tom Akers, to reach up and grab the huge satellite by hand. Let's do it. Got it. All got a good grip. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think we got a satellite. Yeah, we're watching down here. We've got uh, a lot of smiles down here, Dan. It was and still is the only spacewalk ever performed by three people. The flight set a host of other records, including the most spacewalks on a shuttle mission to date, the longest spacewalk to date, and the longest spacewalk by a female to date. Endeavour continued that trend on its second mission, STS-47, in September 1992, a flight that conducted Japanese research in a laboratory in the cargo bay. The crew included the first African-American female to fly in space, astronaut Mae Jemison. I think the important thing is for people to understand and to know that, yes, we, are, we do have and are willing to accept women and minority as, minorities as astronauts. and. Um, I hope that I'm just the first in a long line of uh, African-American women who will be involved in the space program. And we have liftoff, liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavour on an ambitious mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope. In December 1993, Endeavour was called upon to carry out the most ambitious shuttle mission to date on STS-61, the first Hubble Space Telescope servicing mission. Endeavour has a firm handshake with Mr. Hubble's telescope. With the world riveted on the mission's every move, seven astronauts restored Hubble's vision during an unprecedented five spacewalks. The back-to-back -back EVAs were completed by two teams of spacewalkers who outfitted Hubble with a corrective optics instrument called CoStar, installed a second-generation wide-field planetary camera. Hey, no hands. Look how stable you left that. And replaced Hubble's solar arrays. The mission lasted 11 days. Endeavour further pushed the boundaries of shuttle missions in March 1995. On STS 67, it flew an astronomy mission that became the longest shuttle flight to date, amassing over 16 days, 15 hours in orbit conducting its studies with the suite of Astro-1 science instruments in the payload bay. The mission showcased the capabilities of the shuttle's fine steering jets, a system used to hold the instruments stable enough to focus on the stars and celestial phenomena 
as Endeavour circled the Earth at more than 17,000 miles per hour. Two later missions for Endeavour continued the spacecraft's expansion of shuttle capabilities. On STS-69 in September 1995, Endeavour became the first shuttle to release and recapture two satellites during a single mission. And later, on mission STS-77 in May 1996, Endeavour completed a record four rendezvous in orbit with a research platform called Spartan. And ready to fly. Two years later, in December 1998, Endeavour was used to christen a new era in world space exploration. STS-88 would be the first international space station assembly mission. In Endeavour's payload bay was the Node 1 Unity module, the first U.S. component of the space station. Zarya, the Russian functional cargo block module, had been flown to orbit a few weeks earlier on a Russian proton rocket from Kazakhstan. After Endeavour's rendezvous with Zarya, mission specialist Nancy Curry used the shuttle's robotic arm to capture Zarya and mated it to Unity, completing the very first ISS assembly operation. Houston Endeavour, we have capture of Zarya. We copy. Congratulations to the crew of the good ship Endeavour. That's terrific. Several days later, Endeavour's crew became the first to board the new International Space Station. Mission Commander Bob Cabana and Russian cosmonaut Sergei Krikalov opened the hatches and entered the new International Outpost together. Uh, we are so pleased and excited and proud to be uh, a part of the team that made this happen. And our special thanks to all the ISS folks, all their hard work. Uh, we remember when Unity was just an aluminum shell, and it is a truly fine piece of hardware. When Endeavour made its next trip to the International Space Station on STS-97 in late November 2000, the space station was occupied by the Expedition 1 crew, and Endeavour became the first shuttle to visit a crew aboard the station. During STS-97, Endeavour was used to deliver and install the first set of U.S. solar arrays. The hatches stayed closed between Endeavour and the station for five days, to allow the shuttle crew to conduct three spacewalks from Endeavour's airlock. After the EVAs were completed, the hatches were opened, and the crew of Expedition 1 welcomed its visitors. The crew requests permission to come aboard. Endeavour, permission granted. Endeavour, arriving. On April 19, 2001, Endeavour headed to orbit on STS-100. The mission delivered a new era in space robotics to the station, the 58-foot-long Canadarm2. Endeavour's crew performed the first operations in history using two robotic arms in space working together. Endeavour's robotic arm plus the new station arm to complete the mission. Dual robotics operations would become a mainstay of future station construction. Near the end of the mission, as the big arm handed its carrier to Endeavour's robotic arm, it marked the first robotic handshake in space. Between 2003 and 2006, Endeavour received a series of upgrades and safety modifications. Its first flight after those upgrades was STS-118 in August 2007. The mission was a fitting one for Endeavour, as the crew included mission specialist and educator astronaut Barbara Morgan, who served as the backup teacher in space to Krista McAuliffe, who was lost in the Challenger accident. Morgan made her historic flight aboard Endeavour to fulfill McAuliffe's legacy. Some of my uh, mentors that have meant more than anything to me are seven very special people who I believe are mentors to you too. And that was um, the Challenger crew. They were my teachers and I believe they are teaching us today still. When Endeavour completes its final mission, it will have traveled more than 115 million miles during 25 trips to space. It will have carried 139 different people into orbit. Although Endeavour was the final space shuttle to be built, its career has been one of firsts, and its legacy will be one of opening humanity's greatest eye on the universe and expanding the space frontier for nations around the world for an out-of-this-world space laboratory. Houston Endeavour, roll program. 
Roger, roll, Endeavor. I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. That's all right, I don't mind a bit. So you've got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the limit. Are you getting a TV picture now, Houston? Neil, yes, we are getting a TV picture. You're in our field with you now. That's one small step for man. One giant leap.